All right, here we have our new motor, which is a magnet, permanent magnet motor. And you can see it's the rotor is assembled here. And then these are the individual parts. There's one more case that will show also when it's fully assembled. So with this kit, we will provide following parts. We have six very strong neodymium magnets here with the poles facing opposite all the way around, north-south, north-south. Uh, what we have is um, bearings here that will go into the end caps and you can see the design here the holes here are for the air to flow through it um, on either side. These little pockets here will create enough um, airflow inside to cool off the coils if they're going to be pushed hard enough. You can see again the rotor here, how the slots hold the magnets in place so that they can't fly out. And then this end plate over here goes on the side so the magnets can't slide out. You could put epoxy in there to prevent any shaking, but they're pretty tight. They're pretty good in there. And uh, the shaft here, it's one and an eighth inch um, stainless steel. You can see the grooves here for um, a keyway that will be provided. And on one side of these end caps, will be um, grooved out so that you can put the keyway in. There's also a keyway on the outside there to allow for you to key um, so you can see exactly where the keyway is here on this side. So we're going to use that on this side. So one side sticks out a little bit further than the other. This side is merely to provide um, the bearing support and timing. Uh, what we provide with this kit also would be three sets of coils. We may provide different gauge wire, but 18 gauge wire, 24 strands per coil set, uh, three sets of coils will be provided here as we've shown in our other prototype. This is about an inch bigger, this prototype. It's 12 inches across diameter. And um, we'll measure how long it is in a moment. So what else is there to know? So yeah, there will, again, there will be some timing on the outside of the motor, on the outside of the end plates here, which will be opto controlled two circuits to allow for um, running of the motor and then also will provide speed control with that. This kit will be available uh, either alone by with the, with the motor by itself or um, with circuitry as well. So the motor by itself will still include the speed control circuit, um, but the controller part itself may be a separate option. So we'll put it together now and uh, show that. Okay, so we got this one bearing in. It's a very tight fitting, so be careful when you're putting the bearings in that you don't start off at an angle and you want to apply the pressure on the outside of the bearing, not the inside, because then you'll be hitting the bearings. But you can see that they just slightly tap in, slowly go down. I'm not saying this is the way to normally do it, but you can use a um, soft hammer. And slowly goes in.
So these bearings are not going to be wobbling around inside, you can see. They're solid in there. And there'll be some spacers between these and the inner hubs here. See, now that's flush. It's all the way up inside there. So now we're going to put these on. Alright, a couple more parts that didn't mention was the hub for the timing gear, or the timing uh, here. What we have is a certain um, cutaway here. Actually, there are three pieces that we put on there. And then this gets mounted to the shaft. And then we have two opto timing sensors here that will be positioned at the right position and um, bolted into the side plates here. And that allows for the dual timing to take place. You have two sets of magnets, one north, one south. And this coil right here does not represent the coil. It would be much bigger. This was actually being used in the first prototype as a fourth coil for during the time period where there is a um, overlap of off time. There's about two degrees off time. And so if the motor happens to stop right at that position where the opto is not being turned on, then the motor won't go anywhere. So we'll have actually another third opto switch with an additional coil here to um, alleviate that dead spot, overcome that dead spot. So for example, um, you know, if you were in a vehicle and you weren't able to manually turn it to that right position, um, then you would have a problem <laughs> accessing that and you wouldn't be able to go anywhere. So with this extra coil, you could overcome that. Uh, the idea of the coils, again, will be extending beyond the rotor on either side about this length, but a lot wider. The center of each group of wires will be positioned over the center of the magnets here, and there'll be three groups all the way around. And as I said, there'll be one more coil as an option. Um, so I have the same thing in my boat. You can look at my videos on my YouTube channel. You can see the boat has three main sets of coils. The rotor is actually a 12 inch rotor, which is the size of these end plates because the magnets are double the power or double the size. And so I have rather large coils going around and then I have some auxiliary, uh, another small group, coil group that will overcome that dead spot. So that is, those are all the parts except for this, the side pl the plates here that we're having made right now. And then of course the coils get made and the magnets, we don't make those. <laughs> so beyond that we have the optional speed controller which consists of the circuit boards multiplied out with the transistors and um, the optional ability to power lights at the same time or other loads while this is running. So this is a pulsed magnetic motor.